All right, then, my friends. So now we've used spec kit to implement a complete feature, all starting with that original high level spec. And the cool thing about that spec is that you can reuse it with a different plan, task list and implementation. For example, if I wanted to make a similar kind of feature using a different stack or database instead of local storage, then I could use that spec file again for that because it doesn't contain any implementation details, only the required features from a user perspective. Anyway, like I said at the start of this series, I think SpecKit works well with existing projects to implement new features. So I could walk through this whole process again if I wanted to, to add another feature to the application. So what I'm gonna do now is run through this cycle again to implement a new feature. And that feature is gonna to be to make it so the goals can be reordered by dragging and dropping them up and down. But this time I'm gonna run through this much quicker and speed up a lot of the AI work and checking of the documents so that I can condense this into a 10 minute video or thereabouts. So I've already merged that previous feature branch into the main branch on GitHub and I've pulled down those changes into my local repo. So everything's up to date. Now I'm gonna start with a new spec. I don't need to change the constitution or anything because there's no change in the grounding principles of the app. So we can skip that part and we'll jump straight to the specify command. And I'm gonna paste in the following input, drag and drop. So those three words right there are gonna be the branch name, remember? And then it says, let's make it so that the users can reorder goals by dragging and dropping them above or below other goals in the list. So this is quite a simple, straightforward bit of information. And once it's made the spec, we'll use the clarify command to fill in any gaps. All right then, so it's created that spec file and also notice this, we've gone to a new branch 002 this time. So it's detected, we've already got a feature 001, it's gone one up to two and it's called it drag and drop. And we've got that new spec file inside that folder and that's all inside the specs folder as well. Okay, so right here, we've got the user input inside this file, uh, the dates, we've also got the execution flow, which remember is how the coding agent creates this file. Let's scroll down here and we should eventually reach the acceptance scenarios and the primary user story. So as a user managing my goals, I want to reorder my goal list by dragging and dropping goals to different positions so that I can prioritize my goals according to my current needs and preferences, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so these are the acceptance scenarios which we could read through. I'm gonna try and keep this quick, so I'm gonna skip a lot of this. We've got some edge cases right here as well, which we might come across if we clarify in a moment, and then all the functional requirements from one to 10. So there is quite a lot. So it says system must allow users to initiate a drag operation by clicking and holding any goal. What's the last one? Let's have a look. System must preserve the order, position of a goal, even after it's marked as complete or incompleted. All right, so. I'm pretty happy with this spec. So the next stage is to move on to the clarify command. Let's open this back up and say forward slash clarify to do that and press enter. Okay then, so the first question and the category is interaction and UX flow edge case handling. When dragging a goal near the top or the bottom of the edge of a scrollable goal list, what should happen? So auto scroll, list automatically scrolls when dragging within 50 to 100 pixels of the top and bottom edge. Ah, I see. So when you drag it down and the list still goes on, it should start to scroll. Okay, yeah, I think option A for that. So let's press A. Okay, so question two, when a user creates a new goal, where should it appear in the goal list by default? So top of the list, bottom, or after current selection? I think just top of the list. Let's keep that simple. Go with A again. All right, so next one, what visual state should the goal card have while being dragged? So semi-transparent ghost, uh, placeholder plus preview, the full opacity clone or minimal indicator. So a small icon. Hmm. I think this one here, semi-transparent ghost. A lot of the time you'll find that A is the option you go for because it's the most realistic or the most common option. So I'm going to go for A again. Okay, so next question, how should the system show where the dragged goal will be inserted? So we have a horizontal insertion line, highlight the target goal, gap spacing. Yeah, quite like that option. So if we're dragging to a new space, it kind of makes a gap there where it could go. So let's go with C for this one. Okay, and then final question, since FR10 requires keyboard accessibility, what keyboard interaction should allow reordering rather without drag and drop arrow keys plus modifier 
uh, cut and paste, context menu. Um, I'm just going to go with D because I don't want to make this overly complex. So we'll skip that for now. All right, so now it's recorded all of those answers, added them to the spec. I'm happy with those changes, so I'm going to keep them. Okay, so now we've got the spec, we can go ahead and plan this by using the plan command. And then I'm also going to paste in the following input. Plan this using the sortable library for sorting list items and Tailwind for styling. No testing whatsoever, again. So very simple and I'm reiterating the desire not to test because this is a completely throwaway project. We don't need unit tests or integration tests or anything like that. It's completely overkill for this demo, but by all means, keep them in if you're working on an enterprise app or if you need them. Okay, so let's fire this off then. Okay, so it looks like it's all done now and it's given me a pretty extensive summary, including all the documents it's created down here for the plan, including these contracts as well. It's created quite a lot. And up here, we have all of the constitution compliance. We have up here um, the architecture information. So some technical decisions it's made about the architecture, the project context. And this was something I meant to add into a previous video. If you're using something like Copilot that uses instruction files, or I think in Claude, it's a Claude.md file. Um, a lot of agents are taking on the agents.md file as well as like a standard. So if you have any of those, then SpecKit is going to include instructions to update those agent files as needed. So if we take a look over here inside the GitHub folder, you can see we've got this Copilot instructions file now, and it's updated that based on our project. And you can add your manual additions to the file here as well. All right, so I'm not going to read through all of the planning, but you can see at a glance it's created quite a lot of uh, files for this particular feature. All right, so I'm going to trust what it's done is correct. I wouldn't advise doing that if you're working on a serious project. Always read through these things. I just want to carry on going now to get this done for this lesson. So I'm going to keep all of those changes. And now I'm going to close all of these files because I want to run the tasks command next to turn this into a list of tasks. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much ready to start implementing this new feature. And now if we wanted to, we could run the analyze command again to make sure everything checks out. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna skip that command and jump right into the implement one by typing forward slash implement and then hitting enter. All right then, so moment of truth. Let's try dragging these and yeah, that seems to work. We can drag these up and down. The style of this looks okay. If we refresh, well, we don't get the same order that we rearranged to. It's just for the current session, I guess. If we refresh again, then yeah, it goes back to the original uh, order. So they're not stored in local storage. We could add that in the future if we wanted to, but I think on the whole, I am pretty happy with this. Okay then, so hopefully now you've got a decent understanding of what SpecKit is and how it can be used to more effectively use coding agents to implement features into your applications with this whole spec first approach. Now it is new and it's constantly being developed and worked on. So new features are always being added and you can keep up with those new features by checking out the GitHub repo, which I will leave a link to down below the video. Also, if there's any really significant new features or updates, I'll make sure to add a new video to the end of this series as well. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. 
And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one.